praise God. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us. Even as we begin today's service, I pray that God will minister unto you. We thank God that his word is always true and it comes into our hearts with his power. And God wants us to hear his voice and listen to him. And that is my prayer for you today, that as you just listen to this service, as you right where you are at home, that God will meet with you at your point of need. So at this time, I just pray that you just open up your heart to receive of what God has for you today. And I am sure at the end of the service, God will have met with you. So once again, karibu tena. Ambia wase, unezata tuma. The links to your friends, to your wale wase unawajua, WhatsApp, YouTube, uh, Facebook. Tuma is the links. Um, join, ambia watu wa join wasikizei service pamoja. Na, na jua tutakuwa blessed pamoja. Karibu sana. And enjoy our service. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
closest friend I will worship you until the very end Jesus lover of my soul Jesus I will never let you go you've taken me from the miry clay you've set my feet upon the rock and now I closest friend I will worship you until the very end Jesus lover of my soul Jesus I will never let you go you've taken me from the miry clay you've set my feet upon the rock and now i Today we have a very great privilege to have one of our own, a pastor at KG Bahati. He is the pastor of the Teens Church and uh, we've invited him to come and tell us what he has and what he has received from God. Even as we take our break from the studying the book of Luke, I pray that this shall not just be the break from the word of God, but it shall help us rejuvenate ourselves as we get to hear what God has for us. So as you listen to him, may you just open up your heart to receive from God. And he is called Pastor Anthony Kamau. So open up your heart and just allow him to speak unto you the word of God. Let us pray as we hear the word. And Heavenly Father, our God and our King, we stand in your presence, Lord, in awe that you have invited us to be your children through our belief in Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. And Lord, even right now, we thank you that it is by your word that we are cleansed and we are made pure. That Lord, it is by your word that we are instructed. And our prayer is that today, as your servant ministers unto us, O God, we pray that we may not just hear his words, but we may receive your word through him as from you. And we pray, Lord, that whatever obstruction may be in us, that you remove them, that we may receive your word with joy as that soil that had the good condition, as fertile soil, so that your word may bear fruit in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello, good people. My name is Pastor Anthony Kamau, and I'm privileged today to share the word of God with the KUG Bahati uh, Youth Ministry. Um, today I'm going to share the word of God from the book of uh, Genesis, chapter number 1, verse 27 to 28. And the title of this message is, Play Your Role. And I read the word of God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every, every living thing that moves on earth. So here God created man in his own image, as the Bible says. And from then on, he gave him a role. He told him to go and be fruitful. He blessed him and told him to be fruitful. 
and multiply. He told him to go and subdue the earth. He gave him a role. So God created him and then he gave him a role. So likewise, even in this day and age, there are different roles that we need to do. There are different roles that we have to do for us to be able to succeed. We have a role to play in order for us to attain success. Everyone has a role to play. Yes, God loves us. Yes, God is there for us. Yes, God is faithful. But we also have a role to play in order for us to be able to succeed. And uh, we can get different examples from the Bible of men who are with God, of men who are blessed of God, of men who are walking with God, of men who loved God, but still had to play their roles for in order for them to succeed. Let's take an example of Moses. Moses was called by God. He was empowered by God. He was sent to Egypt to go and deliver the children of Israel. So upon reaching there, he was given specific instructions. There were many things that Moses did. There were many plagues that God, God brought upon the land of Egypt you know, as he was judging them. And he did so working in collaboration with uh, his prophet Moses. So God will tell Moses, raise your staff to the sky and it will be dark. And when Moses did it, it was dark. When they were in the wilderness, you know, and the, the children of Israel needed water, God told Moses, speak to the rock and it's going to produce water. So all along, as you look at the life of Moses and as he was working with God, he was doing specific things. He was playing different roles, you know, as a servant of God. He was being asked by God to perform certain things and then God will respond to whatever Moses was, was doing. So when Moses is working with the children of Israel, they are about to leave Egypt, and then there's a Red Sea before them. God speaks to him and tells him, you know, to raise his staff, you know, over the sea. And God responded to that. When Moses did that, God responded, and he, he made way in the water. He divided the Red Sea, and there was a road for them to pass. So all along, God would speak to Moses. He would give him roles. He would tell him what to do. And then God would respond to whatever it is that Moses was doing. And even when you look at David, you know, there is this story of David when, when he, was, um, he was sent by his father to go and take food to his brothers and see how they were doing. Uh, upon reaching there, he saw this man called Goliath, who, who was, uh, for 40 days, the Bible tells us, Goliath would come before the Israelites and would ask them to send a man to go and fight him. And he was mocking them. No one in the whole of Israel gathered enough courage to go and fight Goliath. No one apart from David. So when David came and he heard what Goliath was saying, he, you know, he decided to take action. He decided to gather courage and go and fight him. And God did not kill Goliath before David decided to fight him. For 40 days, the Bible tells us he was mocking them. He was he calling them names. He was, he, he was asking them to bring before a man who could fight him. For 40 days, and no one dared to go and fight Goliath. But, and, and God didn't kill him because it was very easy for God to kill Goliath. He could have just made him fall down and die, but he didn't do that. He waited for a man to do something. He waited for a man you know, to play his role, to take action and go and fight Goliath. And then through this man, then God would, 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 would fight the battle for Israel and make sure that, that Goliath fell down. And actually, the Bible tells us that David was a, small, was a, was a young man. So if you compare him to, to Goliath who was a warrior, then you see it's not really him who fought the battle, but God who fought the battle for Israel. But because David was ready to take up, you know, to gather courage and go face Goliath, then God fought the battle for Israel. So David played his role, whereas many other Israelites, you know, soldiers were not ready to take that role, were not ready to fight. So likewise, even in this life today, Yes, we want to succeed. Yes, God is fighting for us. And yes, God loves us and he is always faithful. But we have a role to play in our situations. Whatever situation that you're going through, you have a role to play. That is what you need to do so that God you know, can be able to inter intervene in your situation and give you victory. And as you look at the story of Moses, even there's a time when Moses was fighting against the Amalekites. The Bible tells us that Joshua on one end is fighting and Moses on the other side is on the mountain. He's raising his hands up in the sky. And God was fighting the battle for the Israelites. And every time he would get tired and lower his hands, the Bible tells us that the Amalekites would begin to win the war. And when he raised his hands up again into the sky, then Joshua and his men would begin to, to win the battle. It shows clearly that again, 
Moses was playing his role. There was something that Moses needed to do for God to give Israel victory. And even today, there is what you need to do for if God is going to give you victory in whatever situation. There is what you need to do. There is what you need to do so that God can fight the battle for you. So all this shows that you have a role to play no matter how close you are to God, if you are to succeed. Moses loved God. He was close to God. The Bible says he was speaking to God even face to face. He had great encounters with God. He was speaking to God and he loved God and God loved him back. He was faithful to God and God was really faithful to, to, to Moses. But he had to play his role. A and that's what I need you to understand today. That even if you are loved by God, even if you are born again, even if you are faithful to God and God is really faithful to you also, there is what you need to do. You have to play your role for you to succeed. In the New Testament, Jesus taught us the same thing. In the New Testament, the Bible, in the book of Matthew 7, uh, verse number 7 to 8, the Bible tells us that, you know, you ask and it shall be given to you. The Bible tells us that you seek and you shall find. The Bible tells us that you knock and the door will be opened to you. It is not God who is asking it is not God who is seeking. It is not God who is knocking. No, it is you as a believer. It is your job to knock so that God will open the door for you. It is your job to seek and God will allow you to find. It is your job to ask and God will give it to you. So again, as Jesus was teaching, he showed us that we also have a role to play. Yes, it is in the New Testament, but we have a role to play. It is our job to ask. It is our job to seek. It is our job to knock. And God will do his part also. But then God does not do his part when you're not doing your part. And does not mean that God is not faithful. No. Actually, the Bible tells us that God remains faithful even when we are not faithful. So you need to play your role. You need to play your role. You need to act so that God can do his part also. And, and it's, it's very evident, even Jesus said in the book of Matthew 6, 33, that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto you. Again, it is your job to seek the kingdom of God. It is your job to do so. It is your job to seek. It is you who is seeking. And then as you seek the kingdom of God, the Bible says that God, everything else that you need, God is going to add it to you because it is your role to seek. So you have a role to play. You have a situation right now that, that is before you. You have matters at hand right now and you need them resolved. But there is that which you need to do. There's a role that you need to play if at all you're going to see a great victory in, in, in your life. And Jesus practiced what he preached. He played his role by dying for you and I on the cross. Jesus came on this earth. He, Jesus is God. He took the form of man. He came on earth. He was born on this earth. He was raised on this earth by his parents. A and his job was to die for you and I on the cross so that we can be redeemed. We can be saved from our sins. And he did all that. Assuming that Jesus came and then left at the age of maybe 20, having not died on the cross, he would not have completed his job. He would not have played his role, his big role in saving the whole of humanity. But he did complete his mission. He died on the cross. He did everything that he was meant to do. So he preached what he was doing. He practiced what he was preaching. He did everything and he showed, you know, he showed us that we also have a role to play. If him, you know, being God, took the form of man and came and died on the cross. You know, he was beaten up. He was, they did all manner of things. He was mocked for the sake of you and I that we may be saved. If he performed you know, this duty, he did what he did. That shows that you also as, as, as a Christian need to play your role if at all you need to succeed. Jesus succeeded in redeeming mankind because he played his role. The role that he was given by, to him by his father to come and die for you and I on the cross. So it is evident even in the New Testament and in the Old Testament that men of God needed to play their roles. Men of God needed to do what God would want them to do. And after they did that, then God would act. You, you know, God is not limited in any way, just like I said, you know. He is faithful, you know. And the Bible tells us that even when we are not faithful, he remains faithful, you know. And this he proved you know, by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and I on the cross. He is faithful even when we are not faithful. He loved us even before we knew him. And he sent his only begotten son to come and die for you and I on the cross that we may be saved. Even though we, do, we did not even know God at that time. Even though we did not love him. 
He remained faithful. So we are not saying that God is limited in any way. He is not limited. He is God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. You know, he created everything. And it is very possible for him to do whatever it is that you would wish him to do in your life. But you have a role to play for that to succeed, you know. Uh, remember, without faith, you can't please God. You know, that is what the Bible says, that without faith, you cannot please God. So you cannot just sit around and expect God to do things for you. You have to apply your faith. You have to apply your faith. Then God will respond to that faith, you know, to whatever you're doing in faith. Because the Bible says, you know, that you seek, you know, it tells us to, see, to ask, seek, and knock. And even as you're doing this, even as you're asking, even as you're, you're seeking, even as, as you're knocking the door, you're just putting that faith into practice. You're exercising your faith. And God will respond to that faith by doing actually what you're asking. Whatever you're asking him to do, he will do. Whatever you're seeking, he'll allow you to find. Whatever door you're knocking, he, it is him who is going to open that door for you. But it is for you to knock the door, for him to open that door. So you need to exercise that faith because the Bible is clear that without faith you can't please God. So what pleases God is your faith. And when you're doing these things that you're supposed to do, when you're playing your role in each and every situation, then you're putting your faith into action and God is going to act even upon whatever it is that you need. He's going to deliver for you in Jesus name so you know asking and seeking and knocking the door is just you exercising your faith that's all you're doing you're just exercising your faith and I believe that is what Jesus was trying to tell us that you need to act you need to exercise your faith you need to do whatever it is that God wants you to do so that he can be able even you know to 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 help you in your situation um, I don't know your situation right now but all I can tell you is this play your role in your situation I do not know what you're going through right now, but you need to play your role. When you look at the life of Moses, God will tell him what to do. He'll tell him, raise your staff, you know, throw your staff on the floor. It, it turns out to be a snake. He was telling them him what he needed to do. And at times, God will not really tell you what you need to do because he knows deep inside your heart, you know whatever, whatever it is that you're supposed to do. When David went uh, and saw that uh, these Israelite army were afraid of this man who would stand before them and mock God and ask them to bring forth a man who would fight him and they were afraid. When he saw all that, uh, he gathered courage. God didn't tell him, you go take the five stones and go fight this guy. He gathered courage. He knew what needed to be done in that particular situation. And so I believe that you, you are in a situation right now as a youth. And that situation that you're facing right now, I know deep inside your heart, you know what needs to be done. And it's up to you even just like David who gathered courage and he did what was required for him to do at that particular moment, that you shall do the same thing. I shall gather courage and do what you need to do for your particular situation. Because I do not know your situation, but God knows. And that is why he has sent me there today to speak this message to you, to share this word with you. Because the Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And today, I believe that God is speaking to you and he's telling you that you need to gather courage you need to play your role in your situation assuming that you have, you've been seeking for a job and you have applied uh, many times you have applied for a job and you've never gotten one today i want to encourage you and tell you even david when he went to that ground he saw you know he this man called goliath had has been had been taunting them for 40 days and no one was acting so you could maybe you have you have applied 40 times or even uh, many many more times than 40 and you have not gotten that job today i came to tell you that you need to start to do so again you need to now again to start sending those applications if at all you have given up you are you are tired of applying for jobs here and there today i want to tell you that you need now to gather courage you need now to gather courage encourage yourself and begin to send those job applications one day and i know you're going to have a testimony because god is going to give you that job you need to play your role in your situation Maybe you, you've come of age and you believe that it, this is now my time to get married and you've been praying about it. You need now to go to the next level to play your role. You know, probably there's that lady that you've been eyeing in church. Go speak to her. Go ask her out. If, if it's your time and you believe it's your time for you to get married, now you need to go to the next level. You need to play your role because God is not going to ask you know, someone to go out with you. It is for you to go and ask that person to go out with them. And then you see how the relationship will go. You know. And maybe you have tried a business and it never worked. You tried once, twice, it never worked. Today I came to encourage you and tell you, you need to try again. 
If at all you believe that is what God has called you to do, if at all you believe that this is the business that God wants you to do, do not give up. Do not just sit down and say that, you no, know, and, and accept defeat. It is for you to play your role. It is for you now to go again, gather courage, and get that business going again. And God is going to, you know, to do miracles and wonders for you. So if you're there and you're not born again, I want to tell you that Jesus played his role. He died for you and I on the cross that we may be saved from sin. And today, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an opportunity to do so. It is your role to accept Jesus. It is your role to believe in him because he already played his role. And if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you know, at the end of the day, you will end up in hell. We don't, we don't want to lie to you. You will end up in hell because the only way to heaven is through the, the Son, through Jesus Christ, because he is the only way. He is the only way. Through him is how you'll get to heaven. So you need to, to, you need to believe in him. You need to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. And then you will be saved from sin. So if you're there and you want to get born again, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent, of, I repent all my sins. Come into my heart. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. And today, I accept you as Lord and personal Savior. If you have prayed that prayer, then you are born again in Jesus' name. So today, I want to encourage you people to just play your role. Play your role in whatever situation. I've just mentioned a few situations. But I know that you know your situation. You know what you're going through. You know what you need from God. You know what you deserve from God. You know, it's your job to seek. It's your job to ask. It's, it's your job to knock that door until God opens. It's your job. It's your role. Just play your role in all different situations that you guys are facing. And I know that and believe that God will come through for you. And God will give you victory today in Jesus' name. So play your role, guys. Let us pray. Lord Jesus. We come before you this day, thanking you for everything that you've done for us. You are good, you are wonderful, and you are merciful. Today you've given me a word about playing our roles. And I want to pray for the youth in every situation, whatever situation that they're facing right now, that Jehovah, you shall give them the courage and the grace to play their roles. Those who have been discouraged, O mighty God, I pray that you empower them, that you give them courage, that they may begin once again. And I pray that you shall give them victory in all their situation. I do pray for the KAG Bahati youth. My God, I pray that you bless them. I pray that you continue fighting for them. I pray that you increase them and that you enlarge their territories in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you and honor you. For it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I can't believe that we've reached the end of our service. But I want you to know that although we may be coming to the end, God has not come to you. And, and my prayer is that you may continue to walk with the presence of God just as you have been with him during this service. So I want to invite you out to our Saturday Bible study sessions that we have as the KAG Youth in Bahati. We are called the Christ Ambassadors. We have this Bible study from 2 p.m. onwards and it's a wonderful time of fellowship. It's a wonderful time where we get to discuss, where we get to to know what God has for us in his word, to take hold of his promises, to take hold of his instructions. So karibu sana, come and be a mabishte zako, that sato nikona plan. And on Mondays as well, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., tunaku invite for a wonderful time of prayer. Tunakam kusik face your God. Bible inasema that God anatuambia that if we call unto his name, atatuskia. Natatonisha great and mighty things that hata to Jaiskia. So come on Mondays, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uneza to follow on YouTube uh, at the Nairobi Christian Center Bahati. Uneza to follow at uh, Facebook, official NCC Bahati. To follow, kuendelea kupata messages za ku encourage, kuendelea kupata word ya ku encourage, ku motivate, kuendelea ku walk na God. Jubila God imaisha hatuwezi make, hatuwezi. But na God tunajua that tutapasavia na tutafika pali God ame intend tuweze kufika. So tuneza funga macho tuombe as we finish off. Thank you Jesus for the word that we have received. We thank you O oh God that you are with us to deliver us. 
we thank you that you're with us to liberate us. And we pray that, Lord, even as we uh, take hold of the coming week, as we live for you, my God and my King, we thank you that we have access through our Lord Jesus to this grace by which we stand. And we pray, O oh God, that you may help us live according to the word that we have received today. Lord, it will be futile, Lord, if we just had it and did nothing about it. But I pray that we may be wise people who have built their foundation on the solid rock by practicing what we have heard. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God our bless. Sana. Karibu na juwa nitaona on Saturday. Asante. Before your presence came and changed me